Hey guys, it's Alex here, and today I've got another After Effects tutorial for you. And this time we will be going over a, um, I'm going to call it the particle intro screen. And it's very much like some of my other particle tutorials, such as the uh, scope, but we can use it with a camera in After Effects and make some 3D animations and the audio reacts to the music. And you can change the text as you can see here. And I'll just do a little preview for you. So we can make it scoop round here with the camera to then reveal the next text. Now this is going to be a quite a long and complicated tutorial so I'm going to go straight into it uh, but we will get through it. So I'm going to make a new project and uh, bear with me because I did this a hell of a long time ago in my ski and snowboard edit so I will just import a song. I have no idea where the song is. There it is. So I'll just import a song for now and obviously you would want to have your um, clips all lined up and that. So but I'm going to go composition, new, I'm going to call this main. Oh. Main and I'm just going to make it 1280. Make it 1280 by 720. Um, it would be 59.94 if I was working with the project. And I'll just make it 10 seconds for now and click OK. So first of all, I'm just going to make a quick background. So I'm going to do that by going new solid, and we'll just call this BG, and we'll make it black for now. And I'm going to make a new solid again. I'm going to call this BG ramp as well, and I'm going to go to effects and presets. And when this loads, so yeah, I am going to be going quite quickly here, just because it is a quite com complicated and uh, long tutorial. Um, yeah, my After Effects seems to have frozen, which is always good news. All right, good. So we type in ramp in the effects and presets, and we'll drag that onto our BG ramp layer. I'm going to make this a radial ramp, and I'm going to then, I'm going to get this eyedropper tool, I'm going to make it black, so they're both black, and I'm just going to make the top one a, a dark grey, and I'm just going to drag it's down, maybe I'll just not drag it up like that. Maybe make this a tad darker, just so it gives it a bit of life. And then we're going to put the scatter up so we don't get all these lines to maybe about about 100. And now we've got our background. So the next thing to do is to make our form there. So we're going to go new, solid again, and we're going to call this form. And we're going to search up in our effects and presets form. Now you will need this plugin, but I'm sure most people have tra all the trap code now. If you don't have it, just search it up on YouTube, there's always a way to get it. So first of all, I've copied down these settings I used, and I'm just going to go over them now. So for the X, I made it 1900. Um, I have no idea why, but that's what I used in the original, then 1000. And the size in X, leave that at 200. Particles in X, make it 150. You could always pump this up when you're going to render, but just while we're working at the moment, we might as well keep it quite low to say render time. And we're going to make the particles in Z or Z one. So now we have one grid of particles. Uh, we can scroll down and we can go to the particle tab. And we can make the feather 10 just to make them a bit more crisp and make the size 2. Um, again, pick, a, pick any color you want. I'll go for a nice blue as I always do. So I think it looks really nice. And we can always put the size random, maybe 25. And same with the opacity just to give a bit of variation. Uh, we can go down to the audio rack now. So I'm just going to bring in my audio layer. But obviously you would want to maybe have it all synced up. And just before like the shot, so I'll just go scoop forward, uh, we'll go to, back to our form, go down to the audio react tab, make our audio layer the song. Now the first reactor we're going to make the it's uh, the fractal and we can make this 50. You won't see much change because we haven't actually gone into the fractal field yet and uh, changed some of the settings and we can also go to disperse and we can make this 25 
So then we can keep on going down. We can go to disperse and twist. We can just disperse them a bit, make it about 20 maybe. Then we can go to the fractal. Um, and we can uh, we can displace them, maybe about 180. So now we start to get some nice looking stuff. Now I'm just looking at my notes and there was one thing I forgot to note down, uh, which was actually the uh, sphere in the middle. But I can we can mess around with some of the settings. So we can go to the spherical field and we can put up the strength of sphere one. So now we start to get a sphere in the middle, but you can't really see it. Uh, we can put the feather down to zero and we can just bump this up. Uh, maybe 250, uh, maybe a bit more, 275, maybe more, uh, 285. Yeah, so it's all personal preference how want, how big you want it. Um, I'll probably leave it there for now. Maybe go up a bit more. Uh, I'll make it 295. Alright, so now we have our sphere. Now, you can see that there's all these little um, sort of particles in the middle, but I don't really want that because I just like to have a clean sort of edge. So what we can do is we can duplicate our background. So it could say if you had a bit more um, of a more adventurous background, you would want it to be the same at the back. Instead of just creating like a solid plot over which we can then duplicate these. And we can go to layer and we can pre compose them, move all the attributes into a new co um, composition. And we can call this sphere um, middle, actually, no, we just call it uh, middle mats. And click OK. So now they're all in its own composition. So now what we can do is we can now mask. We can go to our ellipse tool. We can go in the center and we can drag out. And if we hold shift, it will make a perfect circle. And if we hold control, it will bring it to the middle. And we just want to make it so it's the same size as the sphere there. And now um, if we just solo this, we just got this. Um, here and if we put that above our form layer and we unsolo it you can now see we've got this center in the middle and we can just level this out a bit maybe by 10 pixels like that so now we have now we have that and now also what I did in the example was I also made another layer so I went to the new solid I'm going to call this sphere mat and click OK. And now I'm just going to hide it for now. I'm going to click on our ellipse tool again and I'm going to go to the center, which sort of disappeared, which I don't know why. For this, oh, it's probably because I did that. So I'm just going to, I'm going to go in the center and then drag out, hold shift and control. And I'm just going to make this a bit bigger than the circle, so maybe about there I think. That looks good. And we can hide this layer now. And we can put this above the form layer. And if you can't see your track mat options, press F4. And we're going to make the form alpha inverted. Yeah, alpha inverted. So now we've got a bit more of a circle. And we can put the feather maybe to 150. And we could then mess around if we press MM. On our keyboard and we can mess around with the mask expansion a bit so I think bring it in a bit Let's bring it in about minus 50 it's all personal preference but I think that looks nah, maybe a bit more actually maybe minus 100 yeah that looks good so now we have that so now that all these particles are audio reacting to the music and we can now uh, click F4 again and because we want our mats to move when we add the camera, we want to make them a 3D layer. So we'll make that one a 3D layer and also our composition there. Okay, so now we can make a new text layer. And let's say reinforce. I'll make it white. And we can add some, I don't know, I can add some quick glow, I think. I'm having to go quite quick as this is already nine minutes. Uh, let's scale this down. 
Uh, I'll leave the glow until the end, I think, just in case I run out of time. So we can then make this also 3D. Now what's left to do is to make our camera. So we can go layer, new camera. Let me just call this camera, click OK. Then to make it easier to control our camera, we can go to layer, new null object. And we can call this camera controls. Like that, and make it a 3D layer. And then we can parent, with using the pigwit tool here, the camera to our controls. So now what we can do is we can start to animate. So first of all, if we go to the, uh, if we click R on our keyboard and brings up the Y rotation, we can stopwatch, we hear the stopwatch of the Y rotation, like that. And we can set this to uh, 90. So now you can see you can't actually see any of it because it is just horizontal on the side. So that is it there, but we're looking at it from the side. So we can go forward uh, 30 frames and you can do this by clicking shift page down three times like that. And we can go to say 20. So it's not all the way facing, but it is uh, just about. So, it, so as you can see now, it rotates in like that. And then we can go forward maybe uh, so maybe two seconds and then we can make this negative 20 so we still got a bit of movement while while it's why you why you can still actually read the text now what we we'll do is we we'll go forward another uh, 30 frames like that and we can make this um, we can make this minus 90 so now it's flipped around this way and then we can also um, then we can go for another 30 frames. Oh, press the wrong button. One, two, three. So now we're at three seconds, and we can make this uh, minus 60. So I'm just adding 70 on um, minus 160. Sorry. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding 70 on, but we would want to go 90 to make it face on. But I only want it 20 less, so 70. And then we can go forward another half a minute and a half. So to there, and we can then make this minus uh, 200, like that. And then we can go for another 30 frames, one, two, three. And we can then make this um, minus 270, like that. So now we have our animations, but as you can see on this one, well, this is where we want to change our text. So if we go into our middle keyframe here, where it um, turns to the side. If we just trim our uh, text layer, which is here. So it's gonna click Alt and an M bracket. We can then make a new text layer quickly. We'll call this tutorial. Uh, scale this down. Like that. Um, we can then trim this one by pressing Alt begin bracket. So it starts instead of ends and then we can and now we can make this then a 3D layer. And now you can see that a tutorial comes in, but it is facing the wrong way. So we can fix that by going to the clicking R and changing the Y rotation to 180, which will flip it around, center it back up. And as you can see, oh, we just uh, see now what's happened is it is, oh, I've moved it back in 3D space, that's why. So it's better zero again and there we have it and I'm still moving it back I need to use these sliders here All right so that's now centered so now you can see it all wipes in very nicely like that and that is the basis then we can make the camera rotation look a bit nicer by going to our graph editor so if we make sure the Y rotation is selected and we can click so now what I want it to do is as it rotates around, I want it to go fast, but then slowly go in. So we can click on this keyframe here and then we can hit this little button to ease it in. And we can just drag this pulley. So now what's happening is it's going fast and then it just slowly slows down. And then we can do the same, but this time we want it to go fast out. So we click this one, drag it out a bit. And we want it to ease in here, so we can click on this keyframe, ease it in, pull this out, 
We want it to go fast out, so we can ease it out by, oh, wrong one. Click on that keyframe and then ease it out like that. That will just make it a lot more fluid and a bit nicer. Now I've gone over 15 minutes, which was my target, but I might as well just carry on now. So I'm gonna show you how I add. Then we can, so I can do go over some glow. So we can type in glow into our effects and presets. We can drag glow onto the form layer just to you know, bring out the particles a bit more. Then we can add glow also onto our text layers. Um, I'll make this maybe four intensity, I think. No, you can't actually see anything because that was the previous one. So we want tutorial, add that one, four. Yep, and we can add now maybe some star glow. And we can make the length about five. Go to the color A, color map A, and we can make this electric, that would work well. And we can then also, I'll just make this a bit lighter. We can go to color map B, and we can just change these to maybe a bit of a more greeny, subtle. So obviously just play around with these colors, but yeah, don't, there you go. So that's just some basics or glow settings. Now that's quite harsh on it. But I mean, we could lower the opacity in it to 50. But as you, that's basically what I did. Um, so then you could just copy the star glow onto the Revos text. And there you have it. That is how I made my intro screen that was requested. So keep your um, your tutorial suggestions coming. Um, they're really good. I think the next tutorial will be probably some Cinema 4D lights and materials, just how to get some like really nice glossy text and things like that. And obviously when you actually come to render this out, always add some motion blur onto it um, just to make it, because it will really bring out the particles. Or you can even go into the form there and we can actually turn on the motion blur in the form. We can go to motion blur. We, instead of being on comp settings, we can switch it to on and that will bring out some really nice motion blur. Obviously that will increase the render time, but if you're doing a final render, it will look really nice. So yeah, that's all for today, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you on the next tutorial or edit uh, because I may be entering uh, Baker's 50K, I think. I've got some great ideas for some edits and then I'll probably make eventually a tutorial on them. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, please like it the uh, tutorial if you thought it was helpful in any way and that's all thanks guys see you later